Welcome Substance Mamas. My name is Jana, and I have the privilege of introducing Caitlin. Kate, some of you might know her um, today. She's got three kids. She's married. She loves reading, doing puzzles. Is it like 5,000 puzzles, piece puzzles? or it's Usually 1,000. Oh, okay, yeah. so 1,000. I'm like 300 <laughs> pieces like where I'm at. So, But she likes doing that hiking, Thai food. I love Thai food. And something that's really cool and interesting, and you're going to hear more about this, is that her title of mother mom has changed. So she's been a mom, she's been a single mom, and she's also is a stepmom. And so I think that's just super interesting. So you are, you guys are gonna love what she has to share. So get cozy. And she's gonna be talking about how God is stable. And thank you, Jesus, that he yes. is stable because <laughs> I'm not and a lot of us aren't. So she's gonna be talking a lot about that. So you have gone through some hard stuff in your life and namely becoming a single mom when you were pregnant. So. I can't even imagine that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, this was back in summer of 2014. My okay. oldest was just 16 months old. And um, it was like what should have been a really exciting time in my life. I would just became a stay at home mom. Um, my then husband and I had just bought our first home with like literally six weeks before life blew up um, and we had just found out that we were five weeks pregnant with baby number two. Wow. Um, so yeah, lots of like exciting things. Life was very predictable, planned. Um, and then all of a sudden, very unstable. Um, my husband was arrested and I was suddenly thrown into a single mom, wow. being a single mom. Um, and a few things like that stuck out to me because for a lot of people, when something big is happening, like it's sort of a focus, like this is happening in this area of my life, but maybe some of these other areas are mm -hmm. still stable that you can kind of have a foundation on. But the nature of what had happened, um, mm -hmm. there really wasn't a piece of my life that wasn't affected. Mm -hmm. um, my marriage was now gone. I was a single mom. Right. Um, but it really affected, uh, with the nature of things, my extended family. So that was very broken. Um, I couldn't rely on those relationships in a way I had before. And um, even church life, just totally, it, it just affected every part of it. So it felt like there was nothing stable um, in my life anymore. Right. And you're pregnant. And that yeah. doesn't feel stable in the very beginning, first trimester either, <laughs> right? I mean, and to be walking right. through that, I'm sure, was really yeah. intense. Yeah, so how did you see God moving during that time of instability? Yeah, um, several different ways. Um, one, definitely my community that I had right then. I was thinking about this a couple weeks ago, and. Uh, Peter was preaching again about community and having community before you find yourself in a disaster when you need it. Um, and I definitely had that in very big ways um, through my church community at the time. Um, and just rooting myself in the word was what like convinced me of like God, like everything seems unstable, but God is stable. Like that is where I can put my peace and my foundation through right. all of the turmoil. Right. Um, and I think just that that choice of trust, that is how um, I saw God move in me because it wasn't natural mm -hmm. to choose that trust at that time. Um, because honestly, while I didn't necessarily struggle with like anger at God of what was happening, I questioned him a lot and was like, God, like, sorry, but like, I think you're crazy. Like, if you know the future and you know like that this was going to happen and you knew I was going to be a single mom, like, why would you let me get pregnant? Why would I be having another baby on the way? Like, isn't yeah. isn't one hard enough if I'm going to be by myself? Um, so just a lot of questioning, but uh, really rooting myself in the word and going like, God, and like just repeating to myself, this kind of like mantra yep. every day of like, God is good, God is faithful, and, and studying the scripture in a way that I really hadn't ever before, yeah. of like literally spending a lot of time every day doing that because nothing else would give me peace or hope or um, a sense of, of stability besides yeah. that. Um, so I think choosing that daily choice of, of saying, God is, this is God, who he says he is, is real, 
and therefore I can trust that like the future is going to be good and mm -hmm. uh, that he will provide and because I now needed to find a job and put my kids in daycare and all of these really big life changes that I was just like I don't how do I do this right, right. um and and he did and a, a lot of that was through community you know like I went back to school because what I had done prior to being a mom it was a good job, but I was like, that's not gonna provide sure. the means of being independent in a way that I want for, for What them. did you do? So what did I go back to school for? What, what did you, what were you doing? Oh, I was yeah. a medical assistant Okay. prior to okay. having Naya. Um, and then I went back to school and did uh, medical billing and coding. Okay, okay, yeah. smarty pants. <laughs> so was your faith when like backing up to the arrest and all of that what was your faith like were you a new christian were you have you been a christian your whole life like for people maybe who don't know yeah. you so i actually i grew up in a christian home became a christian when i was a teenager um but it was a very kind of like oh i know the answers i've grown up in this like it was it was fairly I don't know if shallow is the right word, but it's like you could ask a question. I knew the answer and knew what, what the Bible said and what God, what the right thing to do was. Um, but I didn't have a super personal relationship with God. Um, a kind of a bigger storm in my life prior to all of that was my mom passing away when I was mm -hmm. 21. Mm -hmm. And even through that, like, I knew God was good and I knew He was faithful and knew He was there for me, but my kind of outlook was like, am I just going to keep getting hurt as I go through life? Like yeah. people die, people hurt you, people like change. Um, and so I kind of had a distant relationship with God where I still I believed in him. I still went to church every week. Right. I had my faith community and my friends there at church and, and all that. But it was a distant, like, I'll, I'll ask you when I need something and, <laughs> You know, I will worship you through the hard things, but I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to keep my distance so I don't get hurt. Um, so interesting. And did you, did the experience with your husband, did it draw you out of that distance? Did it force you into proximity with it, God the Father or did that come later? Like no, was, that, for me, that came right away because okay. I can remember um, one time, like right after Kinsey was born, so months later, uh, Kinsey was born. And I just cried for days. Like I brought her home and I just cried for days. I was like, I don't even know how I have any tears left. <laughs> but like that was a very pivotal moment for me of going like, okay, life, just, like I don't know how to be enough for two kids. And, you know, I didn't want to put them in daycare. And I, you know, these, all these things uh, that were changing. And I can remember those days going, okay, I can either be, be in pity, be in bitterness, blame shift and go well you know i'm here because of of, of him and you know later on he, he's going to need to fix this for me and provide or you know things like that or i can do better and be stronger than that and choose to like dive into god and what he has for me um and and so that is it was a turning point for okay. me yeah where i just i found a scripture which was isaiah 43 and I said it to myself multiple times a day, every single day for months <laughs> until it was like in, in my brain, like God is not going to let me sink. And uh, God is going to give me what I need to take care of me and of these two girls uh, without just, without so, total reliance on, on others. Um, That's so, so yeah, good. It, it, I can remember going, okay, I can choose to stay distant and to not really feel God's presence in my life, or I can choose to wholeheartedly dive into this and he's gonna be there and show up. And he showed up in so many more ways than I'd ever had before because yeah. I was choosing right. to go there and, and spend that time with him. What are a couple ways that you saw him show up? I mean, I'm sure there's a bajillion. Oh, sure. Um, so as soon as I chose to go back to school, um, I received an anonymous donation that covered the costs. Oh. Um, and it was weird. Thanks, the person God. didn't know how much it cost, but like that, oh, that that's what it was. I want one of those. <laughs> Jesus, please. I want one of those stories. When I hear those, I'm just like, that is just the coolest. Yeah. That's so cool. Uh, and God showed up through a lot of sacrifice of his people. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing, you know, Peter always preaches like what you need, like be that for someone else. Um, there was a lot of people that I had helped them with their kids or with meals during hard times or things like that. 
And those people like jumped on it. They're like, we can't wait to do the same thing for you. Um, my small group at the church I was at, um, like five of those families said, you know, however long it takes you to do this course through school, our five families are combining every month. We will pay your mortgage. Oh. I mean, just like ridiculous wow. sacrifice. That is amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, those things obviously logistically helped you with being a single mom. Were yeah. there other things that people like? So even for our viewers who may want to help single mamas, like yeah. what? I mean, obviously you've listed some really big ones. Are there like small things or like things that you were just so blessed by as a single yeah. mom? Yeah, I think it's important to kind of look at the single parent in your life and see what stage they're at. Because... Um, you know, the first part of my single parent stage, I didn't need meals because I actually lived with a family for a while. Okay. Um, and then when I was in school, yeah, I totally needed friends to help like watch the kids so I could do my homework and things like that. But then later on, uh, when we were in the swing of things, like I was working and the kids were in daycare or now like in school, things like that, um, it definitely shifts with different, um, different stages of sure. my single parenting. So in the later stages, like it just got lonely like but i didn't i didn't need someone to babysit so i could like go out on the town i just wanted a friend to come watch a movie with me yeah um, so i'd have friends that would just come bring some chocolate and watch a movie yeah you, know, you know so just um paying attention to the stage that a person is sure. in is definitely important um figuring out like do you need finances right now or do you just need practical help like I remember one time my friend showed up, she's like, I'm on my way. And she came and she like scrubbed my kitchen for like three God hours. Bless you know, like, <laughs> God bless them. Like, oh, I love this kind of stuff. I was like, hey, I know. I don't. I don't either. And that's not the way that I usually show up. But what I have experienced is that I had a friend who walked through some incredible, unbelievable trauma. And people showed up for her at different times yeah. with different gifts. So initially there were those people that were scrubbing and meals and whatever. And I kind of hit the scene later and it was more prayer support and yes. encouragement, which comes naturally to me. I can bring you meals and I do, but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not something that I always do. So I think about that, like even for yourself, right? Like how you've been wired, God has given us, each of us, unique ways that we can serve the body of Christ and other people too. So I think that that is, that's just great advice because I think sometimes we think, well, there's one thing that I need to do or there's yeah. one way to help this person in need and, and it's actually multifaceted yeah. and, and it takes all of us, you that know. That encouragement piece too, um, especially like later on after the initial like, Ugh, and like, okay, like this is life now. Um, I remember one of my friends reached out and she's like, I remember when my mom passed away, you literally reached out to me every day for like this amount of time and I can't remember now what it was. Mm -hmm. She's like, it just, I'm going to do that for you. And she reached out to me every Aww. single day for over a month and like lots after that, but mm. like every day of just like, here's a verse, here's my prayer for you today. Mm. Like, how are you? Um, yeah. So yeah, that that's so good. That, that's needed too. That actually encourages me because sometimes I, I do, I think we do this, right? Where we like minimize the things that come easy to us is like, oh, it's not that great. Like, it's not really that great that I'm texting you, but <laughs> it, is, it actually yeah. can help. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so what kind of words of advice would you leave our listeners who are walking through a very unstable time or feel unstable, their emotions feel unstable? How, yeah. I mean, you've kind of alluded to some of it, but maybe you've got some resources here, other things yeah. that might help um, tangibly people who just feel like things are crazy in their life. Yeah. Um, so I think the two biggest things would be um, if you don't have that like go-to passage or verse, um, to really dive into scripture and find something that resonates with your heart of like, oh, this encourages me in my situation right now. Um, and say it to yourself over and over again until you have that memorized. Um, because for me, even this passage in Isaiah 43 is, um, is something I still go to on hard days. I'm like, oh, yep, I can say that, like the whole thing to myself. <laughs> Um, and it's encouraging. So really um, finding something that helps you choose on the daily. Like, I know this is truth when it, the truth seems elusive yeah. <laughs> in your situation. Um, and community. Like, be community for others so that when you need it, you have that. That's good. Um, I think those are really the two biggest things. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if you want to, yes. I'll even just yes. kind of say this one <laughs> because I uh, worked on this, but actually it was what we kind of connected on was 
God is stable. And I wrote an article in this uh, devotional saying that exact thing because I often don't feel stable because I feel all the things. And so this devotional um, is on our website so you can download it for free. Um, so this is one thing that might help you. And then you've got some other good ones over there too. I do. Well, this is, this is just my Bible. I love oh, the Bible. physical Bible. Yep, the, the but like, Bible if you're like, you. I don't even know where to start and you need a passage, like Isaiah 40 to 43, all of that yes. is so, so good. Yeah. Um, the other thing I brought was just this book that's called More Than a Conqueror. And there's actually quite a few substance people in here. Each chapter is different by a different person with a different kind type of story. Cool. Of hardship and just um, their walk of faith through that and how they got through that. Um, I have a chapter in here. Yeah, and it goes through a lot more so cool. details and emotions of my story of like the actual event oh, cool. that goes on and goes a little more into like my motivation behind my journey of sure. like getting getting where I was and just um, kind of that key decision we had talked about a little bit earlier. Just like I didn't want my kids to look back and go, oh yeah, mom, mom made it through that hard time. Like mm -hmm. she survived. I wanted them to see a woman who thrived in Jesus of like, mm -hmm. my mom had peace and joy mm -hmm. and like a full life of purpose, even through all of that. Um, and I just want them to look back and like, know like they, that they can grasp that for themselves of like, because she's chose like to trust in Jesus's love as mm -hmm. stable rather than trying to find a different human love. Oh, maybe this one will be stable. Like yeah. that they go, that's what I want. Like I want that peace and joy and stability in Jesus. And so like, I wanted them to see like, like I wanted them to yeah. see a conquer and not just like a, yeah, we, we got through that. That's so good. That's so good. That encourages me so much. So we'll put these resources in the notes on the YouTube uh, channel. So um, maybe not the Bible. You guys should know about that <laughs> resource. That. <laughs> but uh, this one certainly, and this is all about Isaiah 43. I didn't say so that, good. which is also so cool. Um, so check that out. But thank you so much yeah. for sharing your story. And even I'm going to read this one too, because that'll dive into, I mean, these 15 minute interviews don't, they just like scratch the surface. So um, if you have further questions, you can reach out to either one of us. And again, thank you so much and thank have you. a blessed day, you guys.